I didn't have a chance to say hello this morning. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leader, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Recently, as uh, known the naming birds all over here during the little trying to work out the schedule of the balance. President, Congressman John Kasich. Good to see you. Good to see you. Chairman Luger for a revisit. Back again. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and a more pleasant role. I want to introduce my constituents, Debbie Rahal. Yeah. And Bobby Rahal. Yeah. President, yeah. how are you? Pleasure to meet you. One of the 500 on her yesterday. You yeah. went yesterday in Toronto. Okay. Hey. We're on a hot streak. Thank you. Thank you. The other one, I know you must have seen for a while. You were going to wonder whether the race was going to be run. That's right. That's right. It was the race that almost couldn't be run. It uh, came out. Two hours and fifty-five minutes. I'm old enough to remember when that race used to take most of all the day. <laughs> well, I thought somebody had said, uh, "What were you going to talk about?" And I said, "Well, I knew the president at one time had, had been a sports announcer and had done some racing." I think. Well, no, but some talked about it, and I remember. I know that everybody, even if you're young, you remember the, the name of Barney Oldfield. Oh, sure. Well, Barney was the first man to go 60 miles an hour. But um, times have changed. When he retired from that, he got a job with one of the, well, with Chrysler, mm -hmm. and they used to travel around him. So he came to our town where they were having a state fair, and he had a car, and, and, and what he was doing was. Give safety lectures and so forth, but in doing so, advertise the mm -hmm. You won't believe this. You think it was made up. I interviewed him on the radio station, and then it was evening. We were going out to the fair, and I'm going to drive out with him. And a cop picked this up. <laughs> <laughs> he was going way really too fast. So that day, and that day, with running boards on the side of the car and everything, it was always standard that the policeman would put his foot on the running board and then say, who do you think you are, Barney Oldfield? <laughs> and believe it or not, he said it. What did the policeman Barney, Barney said, yes. The policeman didn't know, and he knew who I was, the policeman did vocally there. And I said, officer, may I introduce you, Barney Oldfield? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give me the ticket. No? <laughs> Well, after, right. after the, he qualified two years ago, I was down there, and he came to me and said, do you think there's any way I can get a picture of President Reagan? Because I'm a strong supporter of his. Right. I came back here and wrote down to the liaison people, we and I sent them out to him, and they've got it's on our wall now. On the wall of my right. office. I think you're right. doing great things. Well, I'm proud of you. You're in pretty good hands here. Oh, I think so. I think so. Yeah. He's in charge of the track. <laughs> we're, we're, we're alumni of Dennison University together in Grand Ole, oh, Ohio. Yeah. We have that tie so, also. Very proud of it. We're proud of it. But the senator, we get the magazine from Dennison University, and we're very proud of what the senator has been doing. He's a great ambassador to our school. We have some things that we uh, thought you might like for your memorabilia at some point. That's a yes. picture of our team the day after the 500. And we thought we'd make you an honorary member of the Budweiser Tree Sports Racing Team. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course, now if you ever come to a race, you have to wear this. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think we ought to get into a, a good just group photograph here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, I just. 
just read the inscription. Thank you. Mine's kind of honorary. Yours is free. No, no, no. <laughs> Your job here is much tougher than mine. I'll ever going down around the track, and that's why there's a bookmark. Oh, thank uh, you. And, uh, this key ring now. I'll put the key in the car on there. I will. Thank you very much. I will. A great honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Thank you again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Our great win in the House on Nicaragua. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Thank you. He's a good man. Yes. Could stay in there. Yes. You are just unbelievable. Our support and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the point. President Congressman Matt Ronaldo. How are you? Fine. Good to see you. Good to see I you. guess we should let everyone see you. Yeah. <laughs> now that's on Congress. I don't know how they do that. It's a photograph, but I'll tell you what happened. You were in Elizabeth in 1976. Yeah. I was there at the uh, Holiday Inn. It was when you were campaigning. And a fellow took this with a telephoto lens. And then he's been working on it up until about uh, six or nine months ago. Perhaps little by little. Six. And he repainted it and did the whole thing. And how do they do this on canvas? You don't know. His name is on the back. The yes. Phil Birkebile. Well, listen, will you? Or well, maybe I can give him a ring and thank him myself for doing this, or would you prefer to thank him? Oh, I think he'd be delighted if he ever got a call from you. I think he'd be very, very well, All right. Well, I shall do that. And thank you very oh, you're much. You're welcome. Good to see you. I just wanted to mention one of the people, and you've been up to Elizabeth a couple of times. And in the northern part of New Jersey, we're very, very pleased by what you did recently in Gardner's because as one person put it to me, and maybe one of his, they said, you know, I supported President Reagan on aid to the countries. He said, but we have a bigger problem, he said, from communism within. He said, and I think that's what's behind this whole drug business. So be it, I want to give you a little personal letter of appreciation. And I would hope, you know, the, the Narcotics Officers Association in New Jersey would hope that you do want more of the army, even if it means sealing off the borders. It's the only way you can stop it. I know that's not the purpose of the visit, but well, thanks, thanks very much. Right. Good being with you. Good to see you. As Perry Como used to say, I've got letters, lots and lots of letters. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I hear. Uh, our national our Quantic, local Qantas Club, our, our, it's our golden Qantas Club, put this on as a project. Third grade to sixth grade to write to you uh, because of the walk with the child I was doing here uh, about peace. And so I have about 1,300 letters 1300. from. 1,300? Yes, sir. Uh, Good. And some of them are very interesting. Some of the top ones are some of the better ones. They've sort of been. But they've written to you about peace. For heaven's sakes. Well, will you please convey my thanks to the Kiwanis Club there and we serve out for what they're doing. And this is a very we serve well. Of course, very well. I, we're going to work with your staff to see if I can get a, a signed letter from you for each of those as well. Somehow. Each of the photograph, not your personal signature, but <laughs> somehow get a response to each of them. We're, we're going to work with your staff here and see if it can be done. All right. Thank, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for all your help. Well, listen, and thank you for the help there. Uh, yeah, we'll be down to We'll be down to That's a step toward peace, too. We'll be down to the Yes, I know. Good to see you. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Mr. Hi, President, Mr. how are you, sir? Fine. Thank you very much for taking time. Yes, listen, we have a nice uh, present. This is. Alan Marriage from Mountain Home, Idaho. He sculptured this for you. This is Idaho Cherry, Got California it. Redwood for you. Well, my golly, thank you very much. And that's very generous of you to do this. You know, I'm always embarrassed about saying thanks because I think if I say thanks, it sounds like I'm saying I look good. <laughs> I just look like you. You do look good, Mr. President. <laughs> no. But no, thank you. Let me hold that out so you can shake hands with the President there. All right. All right. Okay, thank you. Well, now, Mr. President, if you uh, need a place to uh, set that for a couple of years till you go back to California, I'd be glad to uh, keep it on loan from you, and we'll put it right in my office where all the people come in, so you can think about that. Well, but that's probably beats putting it 
someplace here and then until we can, because uh, I see a future for that at the Presidential Library. That's right. I mean, that's what I think. That's a perfect. Uh, I see a future for it in the new Reagan room at the White House. All right with you if he buys it for a while? That's fine. <laughs> All right. Over there where you can see it. We keep it down here. I mean, I, I don't mean I don't want to take it away right now, but I just wanted to make that offer. Well, thank you very much. It's just thank great. you, sir. <clears throat> Delighted you're going to be coming out and see us again. Things are going better in my campaign here. I don't know whether you've got any reports, but we picked oh, up. Good. They took another oh, poll. I'm back ahead now. So. Uh, All right. I have to tell you, I am always baffled by you who would carve. I just, well, he didn't. How long did it take you, Alan? Oh, a couple hundred hours overall. I don't know about that. Had to study an awful lot of photographs. I wasn't even a good whittler. <laughs> <laughs> tell me that. <laughs> My God. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for your It's a real pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you. He's, uh, his mother's a bar baracho. Mm -hmm. So he's a Basque, like your friend Paul Basque. Oh, on. well, there are a few of us. Just, just go ahead and sit down. That's fine. Yes. Okay. All right. <coughs> Thank you again, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. You bet. You look good. Feel good. And really appreciate the uh, action of Clayton Yider and Mac Baldridge on these specific unfair trade practices. Really appreciate it. It's meaning a lot to people out there. Yeah. So we've got to keep doing it. We've got to stay on that. And that's the best way to fight the trade practices. Too. Always have to get in my little lobby effort, you know. Mr. Hi, President, this is the president of the uh, Postmasters Association. Well, Mr. Bates. Thank you so much for having me here today. Well, I'm pleased to have For a second you. time I ever raised your hand, you came to Clanton, Alabama when you first ran for office and you spoke at a football stadium, the smallest town you probably ever spoke in. <laughs> and I shook your hand at the Holiday Inn. Okay, Evan. Now I'm president of the National Association of Postmasters. I want you to know here that as part of the federal government, we're here to back and support you and do what's best for the American people. Well, thank you very thank you much. much. And I want you to know that we're we're working for you. you know, I appreciate it. We would like to have a picture and we want to, if, if you don't mind, not by well. using your picture on the front page of our national magazine and with my friend Jerry here. And the president just came back from the you know. He did, and I got to miss it because I was here in Washington. Yeah, Would it be possible to take just one minute to sit at the desk with you to make it look like I was officially? But you won't either work for it one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't take a lot of your time there, but it does mean a lot to our well, I've got to be close to being your, your, your best customer. I understand the mill runs about 500000 a month here. Well, we do appreciate it because without it, we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> We've had it for 210 years, we want to keep it. And I'd like to just keep in the back of your mind, if I can make that something just official, a half a minute. When they get ready to appoint a new Postmaster General next month, We'd like to have someone from within inside the Postal Service if it, Mr. McKean and the other Board of Governors could see fit. We've got 700,000 good qualified Keen, and you feel like you want to insert a word? We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I wish you the best of luck. God bless you. You, know, you, you know where we are now, Obama? Yeah. I'm in the South Africa. South African you know pretty well? Uh, yes, I think so. Still keeping an eye on what I'm going to be saying to you. Somebody gave me a good one. And, um, I don't like apartheid, but I like communism. At least of all the things. <laughs> yes. And it's improving. Yeah. And it's, that's a threat. But we're going to try to be as helpful as we can. Do the job that you've got to do. Oh, God bless you, sir. Don't commit sanctions. You better hurt the people who are trying to help. That's right. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. When could uh, we contact someone on getting. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. President, Mrs. Katie Lowry, Congressman Bill Mr. Lowry, and Mr. It's a pleasure. It's just a pleasure. Well, it was nice to see you. Well, Mr. President, my name's Ashley. Well, it was nice to see you. You're Ashley. Hello, Mr. President, my name's Ashley. We practiced. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Hello, Mr. President. My name's Bill. <laughs> Good to see you. And this is Thomas. Hi, Thomas, Thomas Harrington. Hi, Thomas. Thomas likes your house. <laughs> Good. Why don't we come over here and get a group? That would usually be Okay. This is great. My heart can maybe stop pounding so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding my gun. Wasn't my hand sort of down? Ah, okay. It was chunky. Do something from the Miramar Naval Air Station. Well, I understand you might have some, you've seen the movie in the last. Yes, did see a week. Ended up at Camp David. Did you like it? Yes, very much. Well, well. The top man should get a Top Gun hat, right? <laughs> well, listen. I know that being the family of somebody in the public. Life this way is not the easiest thing in the world. It's got its, it's, got its rewards. Yeah. We're enjoying it. We really are. And you'd be proud. You've been a lot of help. Thank you. So, appreciate it. And I want appreciate to thank you, too. You've been too. a great leader for the country, Mr. President. Sure have. Well, thank it's you. It's easy to follow you. Now, I know one other thing, too. I know that there's someone here who, in not too many weeks from now, is going to have a birthday. Ashley, can I see this? In here is a jar with a seal. On it. And in the jar are jelly beans. And in the case there might be a temptation for some of you to get into them sooner than Mama and Papa would like to have you. Why, here's a little sample of what's in the jar. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. That would be the specialist Mama. gift you get. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, until President Holmes will be on August 2nd. the jar of jelly beans. You're going to be eight, that's right. You're going to, I'm going to have to sit As a mother, I just want to thank you, Mrs. Ray. And in the middle of our drugs, because I look at these little innocent people and I think, how long can I last? Black jelly bean? We've seen a black jelly bean I really thank you. Here at home. And anything we can do, we'll go out and walk and talk and do our part too. And then they can join the just, just say no. That's right. That's Tony Brewster. The just say no. All right. So thank, thank you, sir. I know how busy you are. We sure appreciate it. Appreciate it, sir. Good to see you all. Thank you, sir. Well, you're more than welcome, Andrew. Sure. I know Mrs. Reagan is probably like that when she doesn't like to wear a lot of things on her head at all times. At the ranch when she's out there, telling me to come in from working. It's my protector. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you again. Stress with me one thing, which I have stressed with your staff, and I've stressed it with you, Mr. Bush is going on. And that is, if you could have an arrangement by which Israel can join the preferences of NATO in terms of pricing of the military hardware that it buys, so that it gets military hardware at no higher price than Greece, which is not a dependable ally, mm -hmm. then I think their economic condition would greatly improve. 
And that is when we started. But I just wanted to mention that that was a first problem. Well, I'll look into that. And uh, as far as the present problems are concerned, they realize that there are many leaks that have nothing to do with this administration, nothing to do with it, and nothing whatsoever to do with George Schultz, who greatly loved and respected. But you can't be very afraid of your enemies. I know. <laughs> no. And it wouldn't really be as bad if some, if all of the leaks were honest. But so many of them are a total distortion of what's going on. Cluster bomb is a total distortion. Yeah. Mr. President, finally, when I was over here last time, I told you that I met Franklin Roosevelt when I was a 19-year-old boy at Warm Springs, and he offered me a can of cigarette. And I said, I, I don't smoke, so I won't take it. He got to the president. That would be wrong. And I said to you, you had jelly beans, and I wanted to tell you about jelly beans. And you put them in this envelope, but I failed to ask you to put your John Hancock on that envelope. Because <laughs> my children won't believe it unless, uh, unless you do that. For heaven's sakes. But you rushed over and got an uh, envelope because you said you can't walk out of the room that way. Oh, I missed that goof there. Well, that's uh, Well, I want you to know, sir, it's been a great pleasure to serve you, and I certainly wouldn't have resigned well, listen, I'm until you were able to get a majority of the commission, because I want you to obtain that majority. Well, I'm grateful for all that you've done. Thank you, sir. And your courage. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. God bless you, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir. Okay. And said the speech was outstanding. You know, her remarks to me came at an appropriate moment, because I just come from watching on TV there, the Democratic answer, you know, then Mr. Weicker, and then a few of the other people, and uh, the whole thing sounded like a complete disaster. <laughs> she said, she was, of course, carried on CNN, and she watched CNN afterwards, and they had a colored member of the South African Parliament, the opposition party on, and he was saying what a great speech he thought it was, how he thought that you understood thoroughly what the problem was, how sensitive you were to the issues, and what you recommended were exactly the right things to do. And everybody else is saying I didn't recommend anything to do with this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the CNN the commentator was sort of taken aback by this big hot thing to support. Well, by golly. I didn't see that. Mr. President, Dr. Fane. <laughs> Yes, Mr. President. Well, hello. Thank you very much. Sir. And Dr. Wilkening is our yes, Vice Chairman of our National Commission on Space, and we have completed our work. Jim, President, good to see you again. Jim, yes. And Johnson, Dr. Dr. Johnson, the science advisor. And we've got the uh, final product to turn over to you of our final report of the National Commission on Space. And we're so proud of it and so pleased to have the chance to give it to you. We also have a leather-bound edition for the library, which I assume will be out at Stanford somewhere to yes. give a little class. <laughs> but the one that we're distributing to the public is this Bannon Books version here, and uh, we're just so proud and pleased to be able to give it to you today. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate all that you've done. And I believe very much in this program and that we are the leaders out there and continuing on that, and I think the best thing would be to tell you that I look forward to implementing the recommendations. Well, wonderful. And uh, we think that we've got a number of things here that are consistent with the notion of America as a pioneer nation, a vigorous young nation, and we don't have to spend all the money this year. We understand the problems in, in the budget. But we think it's important to know where we're going, and we tried to lay out a program that I think will be consistent with your view of the United States. By now, the way, there's some fabulous uh, pictures, cartoons in there that you just thumb through and we'll take a look. Ray, I will. Painted by some of the best artists in the country. Well, since we had the artwork done, uh, we decided we'd also make a videotape of the thing because we can, you know, come in with the camera. So we've also put together a 30-minute video presentation of our report, which we're giving. We've given one to every one of the school teachers in the school teacher in space program for her to use in her classroom. We'd like to also give you a copy of our 30-minute video. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to running that. 
All we have to do is call the usher's office. And <laughs> tell, them to tell us what channel we're, they're putting it on. Well, you know, we had our first uh, open public forum in Los Angeles, and Louis Lamour, the Western author, came yes. in and testified. And he gave such an eloquent comparison of the space frontier of the next century with the Western frontier of the last century that we asked him to appear, and he gives us a little pitch in there about the importance of the frontier in America's life. Well, I'm a great fan of this. I've written or read quite a number. Can't say you've ever read them all. No, no. I didn't. <laughs> but I read a number of them, and I don't know if you know about his latest one. You know, written in the same kind of format and all, but takes place in Siberia. It is modern, and it is um, one of our flyers, but who is Indian, and uh, he has been taken prisoner in a devious plot of theirs then to get information out of him, he escapes. And now he is making his way through the mountains of Siberia over the course for his return and all, and all of his native instinct as an Indian and everything, and this, the big search that's on for him and everything. And I, I couldn't believe it that with, he's done it with the same intention to be taken with location and everything. And, uh, where the streams and rivers and the ridges are and so forth, and it does in his, in his western. I just wish we had the movie rights. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank you again, Mr. President. President. Thank you. Delighted to turn it over to you. Please to have Thank you. Well, you've already directed your Office of Science and Technology Policy in 60 days to come back with some specific recommendations, and we're looking forward to doing it. And you'll know who does the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Jim, the other day, on that big, uh, 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 I got confused, I think, and uh, without thinking, I was interpreting 88 and somehow linking that to the, uh, to the fourth uh, oh. shuttle. No, no. 88 is just when we expect to fly again in the first quarter. Now, what, what delay is there going to be with all of this? And, and with the delay in getting to the, our space station program? Well, it depends really on whether we get the, uh, the uh, replacement orbiter. If we can get that, uh, it can be slipped a little bit, but if we get that in time to start building the space station in 1992, we'll be in good shape. We only have three orbiters. We may have to stretch out that time, yeah. but we could delay a little bit on the fourth orbiter and still be there in time for the uh, space station. Uh, and now that is the schedule to time for it. In other words, no delay has been brought about by the Challenger or anything else. Not by the Challenger, no, not, not at all. We, we expect to be back on track, just when we said in the first quarter. I hope it's early in the first quarter. <laughs> and I had someone leaning on me about that and whether Russia was now going to advance and I would leave office and five years from now be castigated as the man and let the Soviets beat us in space. No, not on account of the, uh, the delay in the uh, flying again. On the, uh, and hopefully the space station won't get delayed either. But that depends really. We could probably do it with three orbiters, but it would be a tight program yeah. to try to do it with three orbiters. And uh, we're still waiting a decision from we're, you all along. We're going to have a spread in SCB this coming Friday, which I believe that word is. I heard, heard that it was. Is it firm now? It's firm. Uh, uh, somebody just told me that it was not going to be on Friday. I'm supposed to be there. No. I, I'm supposed to be in Houston uh, yeah, settling the Texas <laughs> delegation down in Friday, but I'll be here. I'll be here. Well, that's what I heard. That you weren't going to be here, so we're going to slip it tomorrow. Oh, well, yeah, it would be better if you could, because this is a mighty uh, angry delegation. They're they're angry because they think we shifted some work from the Johnson Space Center to Huntsville, which we, we didn't. Uh, Whatever, whatever you say, I'll be there. But Monday would be better. All right, well, let's take a look and see when we can. But there, there are several decisions, Mr. President. One is a question of you know, whether we have a fourth shuttle or not. And then, and I think you probably want to have one. The question is, when do you start funding it? And that does impact on, on the space station. If it, if it waits too long, it will be crowded up yeah. on the space station. But we'll talk about it when we get together. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> no, I just let myself get confused. Okay. Right, John. Thanks, Mr. President.